This is our first session on Galatians 4, 1 to 7, and we'll focus on verses 1 through 3, and they are an expansion and explanation of something he had just said, and it might be good to have that in our mind. So here we are in the previous paragraph. Now, before faith came, that is, before faith in Christ, in the incarnation, before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned for the sake of faith. So the law is serving to take us to Christ in faith, which was to be revealed later. So then, the law became our guardian unto Christ, the law taking us to Christ, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, Christ has come, explicit, conscious faith in him has come, we are no longer under a guardian for in Christ Jesus, you're all sons of God through faith. So you're no longer under a guardian anymore because you've come to your inheritance as sons. And it ends here with heirs. We are heirs in Christ. If you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. And now he's going to pick up on that word heirs and say in the next paragraph, I mean that the heir to the person who is going to inherit the promises of God for salvation through uh, Christ by faith in him, that the heir as long as he's a child. So he's going back and restating that same analogy a little differently, and he's going to say something really appalling in just a minute. As long as he's a child, is no different from slave, though he's the Lord of everything. If he comes into his own, grows up into adulthood, and puts away the childish things of reliance upon the slave master or the stewards, he is under stewards and household managers until the date set by the father. And now he compares that analogy to us in the same way we also, thinking perhaps primarily of of the Jewish nation here, but we'll see in a moment more, in the same way we also, when we were children, this child here corresponds to this children, were enslaved, and that corresponds to this slave here. We were enslaved under, and you expect him to say, under the law, because back in the previous chapter, he had said, now before faith came, we were held captive under the law. And he's picking up on this same analogy here with slightly different words, only he doesn't say enslaved or held captive under the law. He says, before we grew up and ceased to be children dependent on stewards and household servants, we were under the elemental principles of the world. Now, what in the world does that mean? So, Father, I pray that as we look at this more closely for a few minutes, you would help us to understand what new thing Paul is drawing out here, a little different and more than he had said in chapter 3, so that we can understand our, our standing today, not under stewards and household managers like a slave, but actually having grown up into our inheritance as sons. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this word, stoicheia here, elementary principles, means what? Why? What is he saying when he says that we were um, enslaved under elemental principles? That word basically means the ABCs of anything. It might be the ABCs of the universe, the elemental uh, things like fire and water and earth. Or it might mean the ABCs if you're learning how to read. Or here's Hebrews 5.12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the 
ABCs of the oracles of God, the stoicheia of the oracles of God. You need the basics. You can't go on to grammar because you don't even know how to spell yet. Or, even more relevant to our context, here's Colossians. If with Christ you died to the elemental principles, the stoicheion of the world, there's that same idea that we're going to have in Galatians. We'll need to ask, what does that mean? Principles of the world. Why, if you died to those stoicheia, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to, and then he calls them regulations, and he gives examples, don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. Okay, so these elemental things are now being treated as basic rules of the law. Now we come back to, uh, or we jump to Galatians 2, just to see this, what this died here implies. You died to the elemental principles and then defines them as these rules. And here's Galatians 2, 19, for through the law we died to the law. So I'm going to argue that the stoicheia here, you were enslaved under the elemental principles, is indeed the basic commands of the Old Testament law, because that's the way they were treated here in verse, uh, that's what the uh, meaning of this analogy is in Galatians 3.23. Now before faith came, you were held captive under the law. And here he's saying under the elemental principles, the basic rules of the world. Now, what are we to make of, of calling, if, if I'm right, that this is, this is uh, basic rules of the, of the law, why does he call them the stoicheia of the world? So a few verses later, here's verses 9 to 11, he refers to these stoicheia, these elemental principles again. He says, but now that you have come to know God, or rather be known by God, how can you turn back? So he's going to say, just like he has throughout this letter, that the Judaizers who've come from the people of James in Jerusalem are trying to get the Christians who have been set free from these laws to turn back to them again. So he says, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles, the stoicheia, of the world, so he says that again, whose slaves you want to be once more. See, in Christ you have graduated or you have grown up beyond the slave role, and you are heirs, and you, here's the evidence that you've wanting to turn back to those elementary principles, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid I've labored over you and you. Those are turning back to the Jewish requirements of the Old Testament to be a part of the feasts and the sacrifices. And he's saying, why would you want to go back to the law when you've been set free from the law? The law understood as these keeping of these rules here, just like in Colossians. Now, here's what I'm suggesting with regard to this of the world. Basic principles of the world, or here in 4, 1 to 7, he is under stewards and household managers until the date set by the Father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved under the elemental principles of the world. And I think the reason he is calling them principles of the world, even though the most immediate meaning is the Jewish law from which we've been set free by Christ, and we are justified not by law-keeping, but by faith in Christ. What he means is to say, if you don't see these stewards, these household managers, which stand for the law, or go back to 23, 
Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned for the sake of faith, which was revealed, which was to be revealed. So then the law became a guardian. If you don't see this guardian and these stewards and household managers as those who are imprisoning you, holding you in captivity for the sake of faith, if you don't understand the law as leading you to faith, leading you to Christ, unto Christ, guardian unto Christ, then these Old Testament laws are no better than the stoicheia of the world. The pagan religions have their own stoicheia. They have their own elementary principles. They have their own rules. You've got Jewish rules from the Old Testament. They've got their rules. The Jewish rules are intended to be stewards and household managers until the date set by the Father to bring you to Christ, to bring you to faith, a right understanding, a full-blooded understanding of the law in its entire Old Testament context would have said, the law is not a ladder by which we demonstrate our ability to relate to Christ as acceptable people. The law is for for a Redeemer. It's taking us to a Redeemer. It's showing us where we're supposed to go in Christ. If you don't perceive them that way, if you want to return to them now and forsake Christ as the ground of your justification and put law in the place of your ground for justification, you have made the law into nothing better than the stoicheia of the pagans around you. And that's what I said was so appalling. This is a new level of indictment, a false understanding of the law and law-keeping as a way to get right with God and stay right with God is a treatment of the law as no better than the religions of the pagan world.